people joining from all areas of the world. Today's session is slightly interesting and different in terms of, uh, I know it is happening within our Microsoft Excel series, but um, the session itself is not an Excel one. It's going to be, you know, like I keep telling us that we need to be aware of all the things that are going to impact the business um, the business world right now. And so DevOps, cloud computing is something that as long as you work within an organization, you will eventually, you know, have um, situations that will make you need to align with your company, even if you do just data analysis. So we have the uh, follow-up by Abimbola with us today as our speaker, as our invited uh, presenter, and he'll be taking us on leveraging DevOps and cloud computing in the 21st century business. So this session is brought to you by your BizEdge and uh, MHS Analytics. Your BizEdge, we are the, we are the uh, sponsor and organizer of this event. We do this to allow people weekly uh, keep reinforcing what they've learned, learn something new, ask questions, you know, learn what they even know in a different way. So we are just big on making sure that you don't forget what you've learned and also you have opportunity to learn something new. And we are always looking for presenters. I keep telling people that the best way to learn what you know or to master what you know is to teach someone else. And we are not picky. You know, we don't believe that, um, uh, we don't believe that people can't make mistake or we should only go for people who are already the best in their area. We have a mix, you know, we will always get experts. We will get people who they are going to use this platform to hone their speaking skills. And we always get also people who they are already far along in their presentation skills. The truth is that um, this pro this webinars is for all of us, you know, so and um, if you need trainings, you can always reach out to us. You know, that's another thing that you can do if you have referrals. So that way we'll keep being in business and providing this value. And if you're in Canada, this is our sister company in Canada. We offer uh, same trainings and consulting. And the good thing about our business in Canada is that we already have clients and we already are doing BI and all of that. So it means that you are not just learning from people who are using their Nigerian knowledge only, but also who have a consulting experience within Canada. And now to the main session, which is our speaker. And uh, his name is Falokwe Abimbola. I'm going to ask him, which one is your first name? Because I keep I keep flipping. I think uh, which so that I'll call you by the right one. I'm guessing Abimbola yeah, is your is, first. Yes, that's it. Abimbola. OK, OK, all right. So he's a cloud and DevOps engineer. He's Microsoft has just certified trainer. He's been in the IT domain for 10 years. He's worked a lot across a lot of companies, Computer Warehouse Group, Airtel, uh, Tech Experts. So he's someone who, you know, has touched a lot of different industries and worked with big names. And he has certifications and he's currently a DevOps engineer. I'm going to share his LinkedIn uh, link so you can connect with him uh, but right now i'm going to hand over to to him so that he can take us away he can take us through what he has in stock for us uh, so abimbola over to you you can take charge of the screen sharing i'm going to fade into the background okay thank you very much just like you rightly said my name means abimbola so i'm going to share my screen um, I kindly request us to just be patient because we're going to do some um, hands on today. I understand that this is going to be a one hour session, but we're still going to touch on some few things on um, so. Microsoft Azure environments and also the DevOps environment. Um, can you hear me clearly, please? Yes, yes, very clear. Yeah, thank you very much. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, okay. Here we go. So, um, um, so we're going to be discussing leveraging um, DevOps and cloud computing in 21 century in business. So when it comes to business, you all know that if you're going to run a business in 21 century um, world or even in our local um, environment, you need to um, ensure that your product or your services is out there. So possibly you're going to need um, you, you may likely need an application. You may likely need if it's just a one page and website. So 
these are things you need to put in place if you're going to run a successful business. No successful business, as we speak, um, is um, operates without being online. So users or hand users or customers or clients who want to patronize this um, business would definitely try to first look up this business online. If this is going to be, I'm not talking about um, small SMEs, I'm talking about um, big business. In fact, even small startups, what they do is they try to portray themselves out there, put themselves out there for people to see in order for them to grow in business and continue in business. I think that's one of the reasons every businessman, every businessman and woman choose to go into business. So um, today we're going to talk about um, some aspect of cloud computing in itself. So we're going to talk about what is cloud computing, shared responsibility of, shared responsibility of um, cloud computing, cloud models, capital and operational cost, um, if you're going to leverage the cloud environment. Then we then migrate to talk about DevOps. So we can't just talk about cloud computing without talking about DevOps. The reason we are going to talk about cloud computing and business is to ensure that you understand why we need cloud computing if you're going to go into um, any business of our choice. Today, the richest man in, um, is down, the richest man in Africa is, um, is the Nigerian Dangote. His business started as a very small conglomerate before it grew to be what it, it currently is today. And now you can't say you want to go buy cement without first trying to um, know the particular depot you're going to go to. You can actually look that up online or try. I'm talking about you um, trying to reach out to Dangote um, Cement itself without going to the small merchants. You want to reach out to Dangote. So there are ways you can go about it. You, you can actually go look Dangote up on Dangote Cement Hub online in order for you to be able to know where their offices are and also try to reach out to them. So for they, what they do is they decided to bring, bring themselves um, online so people can actually see them. So now there are ways to go about bringing yourself online. There are ways to go about you, you as a company or you as an individual who want to go into business um, can put yourself out there. So one of the ways is um, leveraging different um, different um, resources. So for example, um, I'm going to be using Dangote as a case study. So Dangote is a very big business, right? I mean, they have a lot of conglomerates, they have cement, they have refinery fertilizers. So if you go to Dangote environment, you notice that they have what they call a data center. They have what they call their local data center, which can be likened to um, a private data center where they have all their, they, all their servers, all their storages, and also the networking switch and every compute um, needed for them to run their applications that will ensure they are out there for people to see. So if you're going to talk about the capital cost, the capital expenditure of deploying this infrastructure, it's very expensive. Now I'm talking about a successful business or a startup trying to um, leverage an on-premises hardware, which is a private cloud, like trying to get server to deploy your application, trying to get storage to deploy your application. It's going to be so, so expensive. And also um, things might happen even in the process of fusing the services in your on-premises environment. So I'm going to try to balance this up so we all can understand. So we are going to talk about cloud computing and also DevOps. So first, what is a cloud? What is cloud computing? What is cloud? Now, when we hear of cloud, we are like, are we talking about the cloud above the firmament? No, that is not what we are talking about. So when you talk about cloud, first, you need to understand that cloud is, um, First, let's put it this way. So cloud, the, um, the word cloud simply means that there is a data center somewhere that is not within your reach. So if something is not within your reach, you can say, okay, it's on the cloud, right? So because this particular compute, this compute makes up, um, um, forms the servers, the storage, the database, um, the networking. So when you talk about the server, the storage, the networking, these are the computes. These are things that helps you to run your application. However, they are not within your on-premises environment. They are not within your, your company's um, network. They are not within your office space. They are isolated somewhere. So for example, you can 
um, you can run your application instead of you going to get servers, instead of you going to get storages, going to get um, network switches and everything you need to run your application. Instead of going to get those, you can just go to um, DigitalOcean. You get a subscription and you deploy your application there. That simply means you're deploying your application or your software to a cloud environment, to um, an isolated environment. There is a data center sitting somewhere. It's not in your local environment. It's not within your on-premises environment. It's seated somewhere. So what you do is you're giving access to that data center from where you are. You remotely log into that um, server and deploy your application. So when it when, it, when we talk about cloud computing, cloud computing is the delivery of computing services, which are um, servers, storages, um, databases, network, um, networking switch, routers. So the cloud environment will give you everything you need in order for you to be able to deploy your application and run your workload. So you typically pay only for cloud services you use. So if you're going to be using one server, you're going to pay for that particular server you are using. That period of time this server is running, you'll be charged for that period of time. However, if you're not going to use the server, uh, maybe in 24 hours, you're going to use the server for 12 hours. So you'll be charged for 12 hours. Um, Why the remaining 12 hours, you will not be charged for it. Unlike your on-premises environment, you need a lot of things to put in place in order for you to run your application in your on-premises environment. You need to consider lots and lots of factors. For example, you need to talk about the cooling system. Data center requires lots of cooling system. You need HACs, you need power at all times to ensure that power runs. So if you're going to be running your application workload in your on-premises environment, you're going to spend more and more and more because there are a lot of things you need to ensure you carry out preventive maintenance on your servers. I've been to the data center and I understand what data center means. You have to be very careful. If um, if there is no power, there will be no um, service. At that point in time, there will be platform impacted events, which, which, which means customers utilizing the application you're running on your servers will not be able to reach them. So for example, if you're running a FinTech in your on-premises environment and anything goes wrong, at that point in time, during the downtime period, you are losing lots and lots of money. However, should you go into cloud, um, cloud have lots of high availability options, which simply means that your applications will be up and in a running state at all times. There's nothing like um, there is a fire outbreak. I mean, cloud environment ensures high availability. So should anything happen, your application will still be running. We are going to consider that as we go on. So cloud environment talks about you trying to utilize resources sitting in an isolated environment, which is not in your on-premises environment. So that's just a breakdown and um, a paraphrase of what this write-up means. So here is a shared responsibility of the cloud environment. So when it comes to you deploying your application workload or your job workload, um, you see Facebook, you see Google, you see um, WhatsApp. This runs on application, this runs on um, um, servers, all these applications that I've mentioned, they all run on servers. So you need servers in order for you to be able to run your application. You can definitely access a lot of, lot of sites, a lot of software. In the process of accessing this software, what you're doing is you're trying to communicate with the applications. And these applications or, or this software communicate sits on, on servers somewhere. Now, the organization that the organization that you're trying to access the application definitely Either they are, they are the one that owns this particular server or the server is running on a third party, um, third party client in which they're trying to patronize. Either of one of them, your application, your software, your job workload runs on top of an infrastructure. So now we have shared, shared responsibility model, which simply explains um, how it used to be before um, prior to the time of cloud computing. So before the advent of cloud computing, um, there used to be what we call um, the traditional on-premises method, which simply talks about you be the one to get your networking switch, your router, your hubs, and every networking device you need in order for you to be able to communicate with your server. You go get your storage yourself. You're going to get your server. For example, you can go to get Dell 160 um, Haru um, 
which is a Rakubu server, it should be around 6 million naira as we speak, if it has um, like 64 um, cores of CPU. I'm talking about the Nigerian rate. So definitely you need to virtualize this particular server using the technology known as hypervisor in order for you to be able to create a lot of virtual machines which are operating systems. So you then deploy the middleware, the runtime and the data you need to deploy your application. So in this case, you'll be the one to manage all this in your on-premises environment, right? So you're gonna be spending more money to get um, the networking layer, the story layer, the server layer, the virtualization layer, the operating. In fact, you're gonna be the one to get all these layers. But what um, cloud computing um, does is it makes life easy for um for um companies for organization for business um individuals or businessmen and women who want to go into business and ensure that their applications or their software everything that will make them be out there is so easy for them to do so what cloud computing does is it it started to come up with a layer where um they will be the one to manage the vendor will be the one to manage and a layer or another layer where the user, the end user will be able to manage. So for example, if you're going to be in, if you're going to be um, going for infrastructure as a service, infrastructure as a service ensures that the cloud vendor or the cloud provider um, manages the networking layer for you, um, the storage layer for you, server, and also the virtualization layer. So the, the cloud um, provider will be the one to manage this layer for you. All you need to do is just select the operating system you want to use. You want to use Linux operating system or Windows operating system. Deploy your Windows operating system or Linux. Deploy the middleware you want to use to deploy your application. So everything here is everything here is going to be on the customer's hand or the end user's hand. So you'll be the one to say, okay, you know what? I want to deploy a Windows operating system because I'm going to be running my Active Directory domain service there. Or you say, I want to deploy a Linux machine because I want to run a Docker um, application on top of this server. So you sit back and decide what you want to do. In this case, the infrastructure layer has been managed by the vendor or the cloud um, provider. So we also have what we call the platform as a service layer the platform as a service layer tells you that hey the cloud vendor or the cloud um, provider will be the one to manage the networking storage the server virtualization operating system middleware and um, runtime layer so you you just have to come in with your data and your application and just insert your application there or inject your application and your application is up and in a running state so in this case you don't have to go think of getting all this you're going to spend more. You don't want to make money. You have to reduce your expenses. It's fine to um, to spend, right? But if you're spending, you don't have to spend money on things. You can easily leverage somewhere else. So instead of you deploying all this infrastructure, provided um, you can leverage the cloud. So why can't you just go into the cloud instead of you spending more money? You're going to carry out preventive maintenance. But yeah, you only pay for what you use at that point in time because you're being leased the space. And you may likely have is it very secure? Absolutely very much secure. So we also have the um, software as a service. Software as a service tells you that, hey, the vendor will be the one to manage everything in this environment. All you need to do, just subscribe to use this particular software, software like Salesforce, software like Microsoft Office 365. So the software is already packaged. Every software runs on, um, on, an, infrastructure, like runs on an infrastructure. So everything will be managed by Every layer there will be managed by the vendor. So let's just quickly continue. So we also have the type of cloud um, cloud environments. We have the public cloud, we have the private cloud, and we also have the hybrid cloud. So the first one we mentioned is the public cloud. Public cloud, um, a known third party um, cloud provider. For example, Microsoft Azure, for example, AWS, um, GCP, um, Alibaba Cloud. So this uh, public cloud, which allows you to just get a subscription from there, from them and just start deploying your infrastructure. So there are a lot of resources you can actually deploy on, on, on the public cloud. Lots and lot of, um, lot a lot, lot of solutions are there that you can leverage. Once you leverage them, you don't need to start thinking about to, um, why you should, um, use your, your own private cloud, like your private cloud. So private cloud talks about explains your on-premises environment so when you have your um your on-premises environment any 
infrastructure sitting in your on-premises network, your office space um, within your office geographical location is referred to as your private cloud. Why public cloud sits um, somewhere else and it's also owned by um, the third party client. So you, you're not the one that, that, that owns um, the public cloud network or like a private cloud, you own the network, you're in charge of the network, you're in charge of everything that goes on in private cloud. However, public cloud is out there, it belongs to some guys that are into the business of giving um, customers infrastructure so they can actually deploy their um, applications or run their job workload. So hybrid cloud simply talks about still leveraging the public cloud and the private cloud. In my organization where I work, we have um, a private cloud and we also have a public cloud. So uh, most of our job workload runs on our public cloud, others run on our private cloud. In fact, what we what, what we decided to do um, was to um, ensure that if you're running, if some services are running on running in our on-premises environment, which is in our cloud, private cloud environment, and anything should happen to them, maybe they're experiencing downtime or service impacted events, we can easily fill over to cloud and customers are still able to reach the services from wherever they are. So it makes sense to actually leverage both of them as um, a hybrid environment. So when it comes to talking about the cloud environment, you want to go into business, what you do is you have to sit back and count your costs. Um, if you're going to do any business, if you're going to build a house, what you do is just like Christ said, you have to first sit back and cast your, um, count your costs. So um, in the cloud environment, what you do, we have the public cloud. So for public cloud, no costs. Um, you don't have to um, pay a huge amount of money. Like um, you don't have to consider the capital expenditure before start, you start scaling up your um, your servers. All you need to do, you just go there and scale the number of nodes, the number of instances or servers you want to scale to, and you'll be charged for the number of instances you run. But if you want to, if you want to um, get the physical server into your on-premises environment, what you do is you first reach out to the OEM, original um, the, the manufacturers, equipment manufacturer, original original equipment manufacturer, you reach out to a company like Dell, HP, these guys produce servers, and you tell them you want these specs of servers, and it's going to take days, weeks, months before the server gets to your um, location. However, if you're leveraging the public cloud, all you need to do is just scale to the number of nodes you want, and your application will be, um, your application will be um, scaled out or scale up. So scale up simply means increasing the computes. For example, you increase the number of RAM, you increase the number of memory, you increase the number of storage. Why scaling out simply means you increase the number of servers running your application. So you can actually scale out or scale up, increase the number of computes in a particular server or increase the number of nodes or servers running this application. So for public cloud, it's so easy to do that. Application can be quickly provisioned and the provision so you can easily provision your application within a twinkling of an eye and everything will be fine in fact in our organization we deploy a full stack application like api communication we deploy that within three days within three days and it worked perfectly fine without any form of issue why because we leverage the cloud and also we leverage um, devops tools so organization pay only for what they use so you only pay for what you use if you're leveraging um the public cloud however should you want to use the private cloud what you do what do you do hardware must be purchased for start for startup and maintenance so you need to first go purchase your hardware just like i said it takes time i remember when i was um i was doing a training with an organization and the project manager said he purchased a particular server for 800 million naira. that was in 2019 now it took weeks it took weeks for the server to get to nigeria it took weeks now the organization that needed the server, they had issues scaling out. They needed a lot of servers to run the application because a lot of users started coming in, a lot of subscribers started using their platform. So they needed more server to, to um, they needed more servers to run the application so that users can easily access the application without having any form of bottleneck. But so they have to wait for three, four, five weeks before the server came to um, Nigeria. And then they needed experts guys from VMware to do the virtualization, guys from Microsoft to do the virtualization before they now start deploying the application. So it's still going to take long, like 
it's still going to take something less than nothing less than one month for you to be able to after bringing the server to nigeria which is going to take nothing less than maybe close to two months before you do the configuration so it takes roughly like two months for you to set up your application and customers are able to use them without having issues so what i'm just trying to say is why do i have to spend more money leveraging the on-premises method instead of going to the cloud so organizations are responsible for hardware maintenance and updates so i don't have to if i'm i'm on the public cloud i don't patch my server all i do is like i don't have to stress myself patching my server all i do is i just tell microsoft azure you know i need my server to be patched every um two weeks in microsoft there is what we call patch for tuesday so Microsoft sends parties to every Windows um, server. So all you need to do is just go ahead and install the patch. So for private clouds, you will need to be the one to patch your server manually. Why um, Hybrid talks about the flexibility, flexibility between your private and your um, on-premises cloud. We don't have to waste more time. Let's just go. Maybe you can, you can just look it up and see private, public, and hybrid cloud yourself. On the internet so when it comes to the comparison between the public and the private cloud we have what we call capex and opex so the capital expenditure talks about the money you're going to spend purchasing this infrastructure physical infrastructure so you have to plan this um, um you have to plan um what you're going to be doing how you're going to get it done and the money you're going to spend before you're able to deploy your application so these are things you need to consider the capex and the opex OPEX talks about the operational cost. Like you're going to be charged for what you use. If you deploy a virtual machine and the virtual machine runs for 24 hours, virtual machine is equivalent to a server. So the virtual machine runs for 24 hours and you're going to be billed for 24 hours. You, I mean, you're not going to be billed for any other stuff. Unlike your on premises environment, you have the infrastructure in your on premises server or your in-premises data center. So you have to do a lot of things. You have to consider um, power. You consider, I mean, every data center in the world have generator running 247. So you spend more money doing those, like having those in your environment. So it's so expensive than trying to go to the public environment. So um, consumption-based model. So when it comes to, um, when it comes to consumption-based model, like why should I leverage the public cloud? It's the the cost makes sense. Like you're not going to spend a lot of money trying to um trying to deploy your applications. All you need to do is just go there. You can easily you can easily um check how much you're going to be billed for for the next one one week for for the next one month. So you can. Just sit back and plan yourself instead of you saying, hey, you know, I'm going to get this configuration of server. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So sitting back and trying to do some analysis, trying to um, see why you need to go into the public environment or why you need to um, run your on-premises environment makes sense. And should you have information such as this, you'll be able to say to yourself that you think it's best for you to go into um, the public space. Why? Because the public space is very much isolated. They have a technology known as namespace. Namespace helps you to isolate your um, applications and isolate your um, servers from other servers. Because it's in the public environment doesn't doesn't mean anybody can just reach it. No, it's very secure. If your on-premises environment is um, um, is compromised or you think it's easily compromised, definitely your cloud environment should not be easily compromised so these are things you need to see. these are things you need to put in place is it very much secure um can i predict the cost um how am i going to be charged so should you look into this aspect you'll be able to after just supposing both of um like both the cloud public cloud and private cloud you definitely tell yourself i think it's best for me to go to the uh, public environment due to everything that we just considered today so we've now moved from infrastructure, which is running our application on the cloud. So now we're not talking about DevOps side of this or DevOps side of these particular subject matters. So what is DevOps? So DevOps is just a tradition or practices 
that helps you to deploy your application in high velocity. I'm just trying to break everything down. So for example, you remember I gave an instance that, hey, um, the particular company I had the training with, the project manager there, what he does, he actually assists um, organizations to, because he's a project manager, so he, carry out a lot of, he carries out a lot of tasks like that. So he helped them to purchase um, a rack of server, which costs about 300 million, 800 million Naira. And after that, um, the server took, or the rack took a lot of days or weeks before it, it came to Nigeria. So it's going to take lots and lots of engineers to set up the rack because they are going to connect the switch, connect the um, router, the, they're going to do every cabling work. And also before they start talking about the storage and all, before they get to the server aspect of it. So now, here's what I'm telling you. If you're going to use the cloud environment and also use DevOps tools, deploying your application is going to be seamless. So in that organization, it's going to take like lots, like two months for them to be able to deploy the running application that, that, that has been experiencing bottleneck on other servers. However, if you're leveraging cloud computing and DevOps, all you need to do is just for you to scale up the number of nodes because you needed to scale out. You needed to increase the number of servers running your application. So all you need to do, instead of you reaching out to the OEMs, the guy that creates servers to send server down to Nigeria, you just go to the cloud environment, increase, you scale out, increase the number of nodes, the number of servers running your application. By so doing, after that, you can then leverage the, the DevOps side of things. That simply means ensure your application is also spread across the newly added instances or nodes. So we are going to talk about that using um, Kuba, um, Kubernetes, using Docker. So these are DevOps tools. But for now, let's just continue. So DevOps um, is just a culture or a tradition or philosophy or practices that helps you to develop your application workload or your job workload in high velocity. It's very fast. It's very fast. I mean, you don't have to, like there will be no downtime. You remember the company I used as an illustration? They had a lot of downtime. Customers were complaining. They were losing money. But if you leverage cloud computing and DevOps, it's going to be so easy for you to carry out these tasks. And every company needs a DevOps engineer. So why DevOps? DevOps is very fast. When it comes to deploying infrastructure, when it comes to deploying infrastructure, there are tools you can easily use to deploy your infrastructure. On the, on the public cloud environment, even in your private cloud. So there are a lot of tools you can use to deploy infrastructure. So when it comes to speed, it's very fast deploying your application and deploying your infrastructure, which are, which are servers, storages, um, network securities. So it's very fast, rapid de um, delivery. So we have tools like um, CI CD tools. We are going to, we're going to do um, a little hands-on. And it's going to be very, um, um, like very small. We are not going to go in depth. However, um, you're going to understand what I'm trying to do. So rapid delivery. That simply means um, quick um, deployment of your application. Now the first one is speed, right? You want to deploy an infrastructure instead of you waiting for weeks to get these servers. You can easily go deploy your server on the cloud environment using DevOps to, to deploy this server. I'm going to use the DevOps to, to deploy a server and it's gonna be very fast. So rapid delivery, that simply means you're using another DevOps to, remember we say DevOps is a practice, right? We are using another DevOps to, to deploy our application. Reliability, we want to monitor, we want to see how our application, how our operating, um, rather how the, um, what's it called? the infrastructure is faring. We want to know how the infrastructure running our application is faring. We want to know how the applications running on top of these infrastructures are faring. So we need to monitor. And there are a lot of DevOps tools you can use to monitor um, this infrastructure. You want to scale the number of nodes. You want to scale the number of applications um, running your, um, you want to scale the numbers of um, nodes running your application. It's easy to scale. You want to scale the number of, um, 
port running your applications, if you, your application is a Dockerized application, it's easy to do that. So, and it's also easy for you to, um, um, it's also easy for you to collaborate with the um, the engineering team. It's easy for you to collaborate with the um, developer that developed the application, and as you as the middle guy, which is the DevOps, the developer, and also the um, the operation guy. So DevOps means operation, um, develop development and operation. So you work with the developers. So you're not like writing code or the, yes, you can come up with some code that will carry out some scripting functions. However, you work with developers. So you can easily collaborate with engineers from different teams. And also um, it's very secure. So there are a lot of security measures under DevOps, which you can implement. By so doing, your application will be very, very secure. It can be accessed by an external force or an intruder. Should you just look at this? I think it's going to make sense if every 21st century business can leverage cloud computing um, and also um, DevOps. It's going to make sense. There will be no downtime. We don't have to start saying, hey, I've been trying to use this application to send money. Like I've been trying to send money using this bank and it's failing, it's not working. In fact, I've been debited and it's not. Most of these issues are one, most of, this, most of these banks, they are not using tools. They are not using infrastructure that are self, self healing. So if you're using an infrastructure like um, Kubernetes, it's self healing. If the application is not running fine, it restarts it and it, it, it works fine again. If the application is not working fine, you get an alert. So these are things we need to put in place. These are things we need to look into. If any 21 business, um we want to try and ensure is out there for everybody to see i think they need to look into the cloud computing and devops side of things so these are um devops tools so we have docker we have kubernetes we have terraform we have git and github we have ci cd tools such as azure devops um jenkins travis ci um lots and lots for monitoring tools we have um grafana um um prometheus we have ELK stack, which is Elastic Search, Log Search, um, Five Bit, different form of bits, and also Kibana. We have um, Algo CD. So these are tools, like these are DevOps tools, great tools. So let's just play um, with a simple um, task. So this task um, is going to be. Let me just quickly explain this task. So we have an application. It's it's a simple application. It helps us. It tells us um, the weather of our location. So what we do is we're going to push this application to our Azure repository, Azure Container Re Registry, or a repository. It's a place where we keep. It's just like a basket that houses our application, our containerized application. After housing our containerized application, then we we'll then push to our infrastructure, which is known as Azure Kubernetes Service. So Azure Kubernetes Service will be the one, will be the infrastructure that that will host our application. And every of our application will run as a port. So you might not likely understand, but that is just how it is. And we're going to have a load balancer. Load balancer helps us to easily distribute traffic. So we're going to have a public IP address so that end users will be able to access our application. So this is just a simple This is just a simple um, DevOps and cloud computing um, technology we are going to leverage today. Let me just go about it again. So we have, let me bring up this. Okay, so we have, so we have a user here, which serves as our developer. This developer is going to push some code. It's going to develop an application, a Dockerized application. After deploying this Dockerized application, it's going to push to our Azure Container Registry. After pushing to Azure Container Registry, Azure Container Registry houses applications, Docker applications, Dockerized or Docker application. And then after housing this, it's just like a storehouse. After housing the application, it then pushes the application to our Azure Kubernetes service. It pushes it to our Azure Kubernetes service. And then what happened? Hand users like you and I are able to access the application 
using the public IP address, using the public IP address of the pod running the application. So every application you deploy to AKS runs as a pod. All these are DevOps um, languages and DevOps tools. So it might be difficult for you to understand or grasp as we speak. However, it's so easy. So let's just run down to the Microsoft Azure portal and just play around. So this is our Microsoft Azure portal. So this is um, the Azure Kubernetes service that I'm, I'm talking about. So you can actually say, you know what? So I want to create from the Microsoft Azure portal. So you're leveraging the cloud computing tool, right? So in this case, we don't want to stress ourselves trying to just um, click, click, click in order for us to create. So I already have a Terraform script. I already have a Terraform, um, I have a Terraform, um, Terraform is infrastructure as code. So once I run this, it's going to create, once I run this script, this is a script. Once I run this Terraform script, it's going to create the infrastructure here for me. Currently, we don't have any Azure Kubernetes service. So this is a DevOps tool I'm using. I'm using Azure DevOps. So this is Microsoft Azure Cloud. Why this is the DevOps side of Microsoft Azure Cloud, right? So now I can actually run this script and this script would deploy my resource here for me. Now, these are two different um, services. They are different. This is Microsoft Azure and this is Azure DevOps. These are two different services owned by Microsoft. So what we do is we have already entered all the properties of what we want to deploy. So we are going to run it and successfully deploy it. So let's just let's look at it. So we say new pipeline. So the pipeline it's a CI/CD pipeline, which is continuous improvement and continuous deployment. So when you improve your on your code, immediately it's continuously deployed the code. So Let's just quickly play around this. We don't have much time. If there were to be time, we would have just tried to do further explanation so we, we can all grasp what I'm explaining. So we want to deploy our infrastructure. So we're going to just go through this route because I think it's very easy. So we're going to use Ubuntu latest. So I want to quickly deploy this. Okay, so I'm using this. This is going to be my agent. So my agent is what is going to be running this job for me. So now I'm selecting some servers. This servers, what it does is it takes this code that I'm about to deploy, that I'm about to run. It's, it runs this code on top of these servers, Ubuntu latest. It's the version of Ubuntu server. It takes this code and it deploys at the background to this Microsoft Azure environment. It's, it deploys to the data center. I've already specified the region I want this particular resource to be deployed. So, so let's now go ahead and run Terraform, um, Terraform command. So we say Terraform init. So the first thing is the Terraform installer. The second one is um, hard, hard, hard. So we say we want to use zero version. Okay. We say we want to say Terraform plan. Okay. We want to say, okay. Trying to remove this. I think I'm not seeing what I want. So, Terraform. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to say Terraform init 
Okay. I'm going to say Terraform init. I'm going to create. So what I'm doing is I'm using, I'm trying to connect to Microsoft Azure from this um, Azure DevOps. So it's going to ask me for some information. I don't think I have. I think I do. I think I do. Okay, let me see. Nope. Yes. Okay. It's trying to, so I'm trying to connect from this environment, Microsoft Azure, Azure DevOps environment to my Azure environment here. Yeah. So let's see. No, it's not. It's not it's, let me see. I think this should fly. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. So, yes. So, um, you can just um, forgive me for trying to do this alone without trying to involve you because um, um, I'll have to. This is very, very and technical. So what I'm trying to do is I want to deploy, I'm going to be using the CICD tool. I'm going to be using the CICD tool to deploy this infrastructure. And the CICD tool is this, is Azure Pipeline, right? So this is the Azure Pipeline I'm trying to use to deploy a resource on the cloud. So that is what I'm currently doing. So I'm going to say .tf. In here. I'm going to say, let me see, I'm going to be using zero as a version. I'm going to say, plan. Okay. I think this is what we used. Let me confirm. Okay, service principle. Vanity service principle. Okay. Um, so um this is actually technical. There are times you're gonna get some error messages. All you need to do is just have to be patient to troubleshoot. So many times when you're working using code, infrastructure as code, you may likely have issues like but all you need to do is just be just be calm and try to play around it and you'll be able to successfully deploy your infrastructure. So let's see if this is going to deploy our infrastructure. So I'm currently trying to deploy my Kubernetes, um, my Kubernetes infrastructure to my cloud computing environment, which is Azure, Microsoft Azure using CI CD2. So let's see if this is working fine. Let's see if this is working fine. So the pipeline is running. So this is running at the background. It's running at the background. So it's trying to deploy this infrastructure to this environment. So let's see. Let's see. I should have a new resource group created. Let's see. I just pray not to have any error message. So let's see. So it's still creating. It's trying to create. So we are using a pipeline, a CI CD2. Once we are done um, deploying this infrastructure, we, we are going to use this tool again to create um, our application, to deploy our application to this. So when it comes to deploying application, when it comes, comes to deploying infrastructure, you can leverage DevOps tools. So if you go back to our, um, if you come to our um, PowerPoint, we made mention of some of um, the tools you can leverage. There are a lot of tools you can learn in order for you to 
um, stand out in the DevOps space. So let's still go back and see if this is deploying. Okay, I think it's deploying. So if we check, let's see if this is deploying. Perfect. Can we see? There was nothing here before. So we are deploying our infrastructure using Terraform. So it's deploying Terraform. It's deploying the, the infrastructure, which is known as Kubernetes. Let's see. Let's come to the resource group and see. It's perfect. So it's going to deploy another resource group, which is known as a managed resource group, which is this. So these are the resources that that's deployed. However, it's still deploying them. It's still deploying. So let's just hold on. So there are a lot of tools we all can learn should you want to go into the DevOps space. It helps us to easily deploy our infrastructure within the twinkling of an eye. My organization where we work, we have on-premises um, infrastructure that we run. And those infrastructure, we have to um, reach out to the OEMs, telling them that we need the specifications of servers, and then they bring them to Nigeria. And then we still need to reach out to a com company like VMware EXXI, VMware um, Corporation, for them to help us deploy the virtualizing tool. So it takes time. But now we are using DevOps. So it's so fast, leveraging CI-CD tool. CI-CD simply means continuous improve, um, improvement and continuous deployment. So if I should modify this code, if I should modify this code, which is the script I'm running to deploy the infrastructure, if I should modify and I commit, and I click on commit, see, if I should modify this, for example, and I click on commit, what happens is it starts, um, it's going to start deploying the change that have been made to this infrastructure, to this code. So any change you made, it triggers and it starts working on the change made. So let's go back and see if that's what successfully deployed. Okay, it's still deploying. I think we're almost done. Once this is deployed, we'll just quickly deploy our application and we are fine. So let's just wait for this to be successfully deployed. Let's come to our Azure environment and see. Okay, let's come here. Okay, perfect. So our, um, our Kubernetes should be up and in the running state. We can see it's showing creating running. So let's see, it's still running. Let's check the number of nodes we have. Um, number of node, node pools. Okay, so we have some nodes running. Let's see the number of nodes. So Kubernetes um, talks about, um, Kubernetes is all about um, master-slave relationships. So you have the master node and you also have the worker node. So these are the worker nodes. They run your port, your application for you. So let's see, once it's deployed, I'll just go back to my CICD tool and try to deploy our applications and we are done. Okay, perfect, succeeded. And let's come to our CICD tool. Oh, it's still running. We should be done. Perfect, it's done, successfully completed. So um, it was able to deploy this infrastructure within the space of five minutes. Perfect, so here is our, um, our Kubernetes cluster running. So let's quickly deploy our application. So I already have my code. And I named the code um, Office Hour, I think Office Hour Session. Yes, Office Hour Session. So, so this is the code. We have um, the code in here. So it's just a weather app. So this is the code. It's a weather app. It's API communication. It allows you to just try to insert your location and it tells you the weather um calculation of your location so can we just quickly deploy this so let's deploy this to the target infrastructure we would, in which we just created so we click on this new pipeline click on that I think is office hour second okay so we are going to say hey looking at this um where is okay so um, so here is it. So we've successfully created our target infrastructure. I remember I explained that infrastructure helps you to run your application. And we've deployed our infrastructure. Our infrastructure have three nodes. That, that simply means three servers running. 
as the worker node, right? So we are now going to push our application to um, the registry. The registry is going to house the application, and then it's going to now push the uh, it's going to now push the application down to the target infrastructure. That simply means I want to have a copy of the application that I've written down that I've um, that I've created in the registry. A registry is going to house it and then deploy to the Kubernetes cluster. And then users will be able to access the application. So let's come, um, where were we? Okay, yes, yeah. so we're gonna click on build. So we're gonna build the Docker image. We're gonna to push to ACR and then deploy to Kubernetes. So that's what we are doing. So this should take like, some few minutes to deploy, push, take some few minutes to build, push to um, the registry and then deploy to the Kubernetes cluster. Um, so possibly next five, 10 minutes, we should be done with this. Okay, perfect. So select the cluster that we created. Um, so we just need it to be in um, default namespace. Here is our the container registry that houses our application, and this is going to be the name of our image. And port 80 should be open to ensure our application can be accessed over our browser. Okay, so it's going to create the scripts. You can lev you can use um, Jenkins, Travis CI to do this particular operation if you don't want to use Azure DevOps or if you're not used to using Azure DevOps. So it's generating the YAML script. All you need to do once the YAML script comes up, you just run it and your application will be deployed to this target infrastructure. However, you can still come in here and say, okay, you know what? Instead of trying to use CI CD, I want to run my application here. So um, why that is why that is generating, let me try to connect to my cluster. So I can say, okay, I don't want to use um I can say I don't want to use the CI CD to I want to be able to use connecting just give me some minutes i was i can see i want to use the terminal like i want to type commands so let this comes up and we'll see how that is done so invariably what we are saying is um devops and cloud works on hand in hand and it helps you to be able to easily deploy your application your infrastructure um and whatever you want to create on the cloud Okay, so let me clear the screen. So I can say kubectl um, create um, deployment. The name of the deployment should be, let's say test deployment. The image will be nginx and port 80. So it's going to create this deployment. It's going to create this. So let me scale, scale this. This is an application. It's a web server known as Nginx, right? I can actually scale it. So I can say, okay, let me show you so you can see for yourself. Okay, come to workload. You're going to see what we just deployed on the terminal. This is it. This is what we just deployed known as test. And it has just one, just one pod running, right? So if 10 users are trying to access this particular application, or this web server, it's going to take a lot of time. So let's kill it out. Let's increase the number of um, pods running that particular service. So you say kubectl, oops, sorry. So you say kubectl scale deployment tests to replicas 10. So it's going to increase the number of pods running your application. See, can we see, let's just go ahead and refresh. Can we see 10 coming up, seven are still coming. Perfect. Can we see? We now have 10. So when you come in, you click on pod, you're going to see the num pod is the smallest unit in Kubernetes that helps you to run your application. Can we see? We now have 10 pods 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So these are the pods. One, one means one container running in one pod, and they are currently in a running state. So we've successfully scaled our application. So let's come to. So what I did here was just, instead of using CI CD tool to deploy your application, you can just go ahead and use the terminal. 
But if you're going to be deploying lots and lots of application, so in our organization, we deploy APIs. So we can deploy like, like 30 API at once. So it's best to use CI CD to, to deploy API. So let's just go ahead and run this. Once we run, it's going to deploy. Once we run, it's going to deploy our application for us. So this is it. It's building it and it's going to deploy to the target infrastructure, which is this. This is just an illustration, right? So let's just come back and play around this. Why that is deploying, let's just play around this environment. So now let's now try to, I want to access this Nginx that I just deployed. So what I'll do is I have to create a service. So I'm just teaching us um, some um, part of Kubernetes. So we say um, exposed Kubernetes, expose, expose, right? Okay, so we say we don't have, we don't currently have a service here. So we're going to say expose. Target should be. So let, let me use this. Um, so the name, okay, let's use this. The name will be, I'm just trying to. Um, SVC port should be 22. I know the port should be 80, and the target port should be 80. No, we don't have a namespace. We don't have a namespace. Okay, expose deployment. I mean, what's the name of our deployment test? Should work perfect. Okay, so we are trying to see. So we come to service. Um, so I'm checking what I just deployed. That simply means the service it's currently deploying. So once this is hop, it's going to give us a public IP address, an external IP address. So we'll use that IP address to access this application or a web server that I deployed. Just, uh, yeah, so there's something we noticed, this last one you wrote, right? Oh, great, you can see it. I think you forgot to remove one of the zero in the target port. So it's showing 800 oh, instead of it. <laughs> thank you. So let me just delete it. Thank you, I appreciate it. So I'm going Dimitri to- Dimitri, you spotted it. Thank you, Dimitri, I appreciate it. So let's see. Okay, it's deployed. So. Thank you, Dimeji. If not, if I try to click on this IP, it's not going to work because I've um, I did wrong configuration. So I'm going to delete this. So I'm going to delete this. So let's come back to our portal. Let's come back to this. So the application is actually listening on port 80 and the target port is 80. So I'm going to create again. Oh, it exists. Okay, no, it's not existing. It's still in deleting states. That's why. It's still in deleting states. That's why it's saying, hey, it's not existing. It's going to take time. Okay, let's come back. So we are trying to do, okay, it's asking us for permission to deploy to the target infrastructure. So we save you and we're going to give you the permission to deploy to our Kubernetes cluster that we just deployed. So we built, we've pushed it to where the application will be stored. Now we want to deploy the application to our target infrastructure. So it's going to deploy to this Kubernetes cluster that we are playing with currently. So instead of using this, if you don't want to run command, I like to run command. And also I like to use um, Terraform sometimes and also use the CICD too. So now we are trying to deploy using the CICD and also try to run command. So can you see what we're deploying here? What we're deploying here is currently coming up. Can we see it's coming up? So we are successfully deploying our application. So this is application, it's coming up. I mean, I'm talking about the one we are deploying using our Azure DevOps. It's here coming up, but let's still come back to this. So I think we've, yes, this should work. So when you come, you're gonna see test. Refresh, you're gonna see test. 
Okay, perfect. The one we deployed with CICD is successfully deployed. If we click out, okay, it's still deploying. It's deployed, so let's see. Perfect, so all we need to do just to come, copy this IP, copy the public IP address. So what, what's the public IP address? For you to be able to, for us to be able to communicate, we have to go into the um, larger network, which is known as the internet, right? So your device has a public IP address. So every device that wants to be accessible over the internet would definitely need a public IP address. So currently, my application has a public IP address, so I want to access it. That's why all I need to do is just for me to copy this and it comes up. So this is the Nginx um, web server. So currently, the Nginx web server is currently running on port 80. So if I like, I enter port 80. If I don't like, I leave it, it's still the same thing. Thank you. If not, I would have had issues. If, I had, if the media had not told me that, hey, it was port 80, I would have tried to just run it without entering port um, 80 and I'll have issues, but thank you very much. I really appreciate it. So if you're running each, um, um, your application on port 80, that simply means your application is listening on port HTTP, not HTTPS. HTTPS is secure, um, which is 443. So in this case, we are, can we say port 800 field? So let me just go back and enter, oh, sorry. Let me go and enter 80. So 80 is gonna work fine. So. Um, thank you, Dimitri. I appreciate you. So we, let's let's come back. So this is the application we deployed using. Um, um, this is the application we deployed using our CI CD2, right? So if we come and click, let's just click on it and see. It's still creating. So let's see. I think it's still in creating states. Still in creating. Still, let's see the nodes. Let's see the nodes that are running. Oh, okay. It's failing. It's not creating. Oh, image pull back off. It's unable to pull the image. Image pull back off. It's unable. It's having issues pulling its image from the registry. Oh, now I see. I made a mistake while I was trying to create it. It's not failing. However, it's just having issues creating its image. So let's come back here. Um, let's try to edit. Let's see the image we have in our Kubernetes. Let's come to Azure. Come. We'll go to ACR. So this is its Azure Container Registry. So click on our registry. So this registry is just a house. It helps you to house your um, image, your application. So I have some applications here. Okay, so let me see. Let's use this one. So I'll use this. Okay, so let's come. Let's go back to our code. Go to image. Um, Repository, repository, repository image. Yes, this is my full image secret. Yes, I'm using full image secret. Certain, certain, certain. Okay, it's fine. So, this is what I would do. I'm going to stop this. Pardon me, guys. Um, let me, I'm going to stop this. Um, let me stop. Should I delete? Let me just delete. I actually know why I failed. I, so let's come back. So we want to deploy, we've successfully deployed our infrastructure. Now I want to deploy our application. So. So I think is um, let's see. Hold on, guys. 
let me deploy a different application. Do you want to spend more time? Let me see if I have something else I can deploy. Uh, I'm just checking. Since that is failing, I don't know why that is failing. Okay, let me check my repository. Just pardon me, guys. Let me quickly see my repository. Let me actually check for that. Oh, no, no, no. This is oh, no. I think the application is broken. I don't. Woman class. Yep, Sister Rafa. Jennifer. Oh man, this is broken. So um we've been able to deploy the application using this um the terminal. But what we are trying to do is we want to use want to deploy to for it's failing. Let, let me just try this out for the last time. Can you guys see? Hold on. Um, office, right? Session, right? Go office session. I'll come here. Let me come to um commits. Hold on, I want to do something. I think I should be able to fix that. Let me just play again. Deploy afresh. Let me see. Let me deploy afresh. So deploy office session. This. This. So I'm trying to deploy it afresh. Okay, so this is our cluster. Okay, we're gonna use that namespace. Okay, image. So now let's now come to, so now let me now check our Kubernetes and see the image we would like to use. So we're going to use this image. So we are going to use this image, perfect. So this, I think this should work. So I'm going to use this my image here too. So remember, I said you can actually store a lot of images there. Shit, it's time for me to resume my job. Okay. Okay. So the name of the image is going to be this, right? So. Okay, so for for it it for okay for okay container registry and this it it for let's see this should work okay so let's see this should work I think this should work so we're going to successfully deploy. Uh, application from this pipeline to our cloud environment in this target infrastructure. So there are a lot of target infrastructure. You can create um, a VMSS as a target infrastructure. Ordinarily, this VMSS is serving as a target infrastructure beneath this Kubernetes cluster. So it's the server that is running our ports. So you can also deploy your application to a virtual machine. A virtual machine can actually serve the purpose of the target infrastructure. So there are a lot of services in the cloud environment that if you're going to be running your on-premises environment, 
you will not be able to leverage such solutions. So these are beautiful solutions. So if you're into machine learning, um, you can see you have AI video indexer, you have um, Azure Open AI, Azure AI services. So there are a lot of Azure API. See, there are a lot of services. If you're into analytics, there are a lot of um, services that you can leverage using Microsoft Azure. If you're using, um, if you want to use the compute session of the cloud, there are a lot of compute sessions you can, or compute resources you can use. If you want to use container, currently we are using container. We are using this container, Pivency service. We are using container registries. Um, you can also use Red Hat's. Where I work, we use OKD. This is OKD, OpenShift. So if you want to use databases, there are a lot of databases. So DevOps tools, so these are DevOps tools. You can also use lots and lot of DevOps tools. You have data for monitoring. You have Elasticsearch. I mean mention of this. You have Prometheus, like lots and lots of resources. So the cloud makes sense to deploy your um, workload. So let's see if this is going to work fine. OK, so permit. Permit. Let's see. So this is one. This one to deploy our command So let's come. I just hope it's not going to tell us the name is existing. I would have deleted that one. I think I would have deleted this deployment. So it doesn't tell me that the name is currently existing. I think it may likely tell us that the name is existing because it was creating the workload. However, I wasn't successful. Okay. I think it's not going to tell us that. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Oh. Let me see. This has to do with the image. It has to do with the images and hero. I don't want to waste your time. Um, I don't want to waste your time. If not, I'll just um, have to sit back and try to troubleshoot this image. It has to do with the image. See, I'm having image issue. So I I don't want to waste your time. Or if you can stay back, just give me some time. Maybe you can just proceed with the session while I try to um, search for the right image on my hand. And once you're done, once I'm done, rather, I'll just let you know. So for now, I made mention of um, deploying your infrastructure, which we did. We use this particular CI CD tool to deploy to Azure. It works. However, when we try to deploy our applications with it, we have having issues. I've done this on several occasions, and um, fixing this issue will not be, be an issue for me. So I'll kindly stop sharing my session so you can proceed and um, just go ahead while I try to troubleshoot for my end. Okay. Uh, but will you be able to multitask? Like it's mostly questions that we have lined up for no you. Issues. Now. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Fine. Okay. All right. Great. All right. So uh, maybe I'll give um, I'll give preference to people in the audience. Anyone want to ask their questions first before I fire off with the ones that I already have? Well, it's it's a wonderful one you've done. You know. <laughs> I, I suspect that people are pulling in their colleagues and all because at one point we got up to 21 and uh, that was not the number we started with. So it meant people were joining, they see this is interesting and they started notifying their friends and colleagues to join. Uh, so while I wait for people to had, ask, by the way, if you want to talk and you need me to give you ability to speak, you can raise your hand, otherwise you can type in the chat box. The reason the meeting is default to only presenters can present is because we have had a very nasty experience of someone trying to hijack the session and was, you know, doing screen share, showing things that, you know, are not supposed to be shown in a session like this and just bombarding the whole session with, with, with rubbish um, coming out of his speaker. So we decided to make sure that we don't let that happen again. So it's not like we just don't want you to talk. We're just trying to optionally select people that can talk. Uh, so I'll start with my questions. Question number one is, um, 
for a lot of us, you know, for me, <laughs> I I don't have experience in this zone, but it's looking like the whole uh, development world, you know, is going into this DevOps um, ideology, you know. So even I'm beginning to hear of uh, data analytics DevOps, data engineering DevOps. Before it used to be just for web application de deployment, but it's beginning to sneak up on us also in the data analytics space. And so my question that I want to ask you is that, um, is it always going to involve uh, is it always going to involve these three levels of creations, three levels of tools, you know, having a, a VM, you know, number two is also having a container and then having, you know, this tool that we manage all the containers because by my understanding, there's the VM part, which like you showed us, it can be on whatever level of um, maybe in-house, you know, partial, whatever partial state of cloud we want to use, IAS, PAS, SAS, and then there will always be uh, containers, you know, Docker, I think is the one of the very popular one, and then we will now have things that we manage those containers like Kubernetes. So my question is, is that like the gold standard? Is that like how, when I was learning um, networking, we used to talk about the OSI reference model, and we always say there must always be physical layer, data layer, network layer, and all of that. Are we also saying in the DevOps space, there will always be something that will manage containers, there will always be containers, and there will be the things the containers are implemented on. So that's my question. Yeah, thank you very much for the question. So when it comes to DevOps, DevOps is actually um, segmented into different parts. So for example, some organization DevOps is just deployment of infrastructure. So I have a friend who works as a DevOps engineer for a particular company in the US. What it does is just to deploy infrastructure using Terraform. Just keep deploying, just keep any infrastructure you want to deploy, any resource on Azure, hey bro, you're not using the portal, you're not using CLI, you're going to be using Terraform. So DevOps differs in different environments. So for in my environment, our DevOps is purely containerization. So you need Docker, you need Kubernetes, you need Terraform, you need Kibana, you need Elasticsearch, you need these tools to run a successful um, environment. So for my environment, in my environment rather, that is what we leverage. Um, I have a friend, a friend of mine, I think she should be here. So she attended a particular interview and everything she was hearing was related to um, service box, data, 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 and they needed someone who is, in, who is a DevOps engineer to take up the role. So what I'm simply saying is, you may likely say, I'm a DevOps engineer, but what part of DevOps do you specialize? Are you a DevOps engineer who understand the container side of this, who understand um, the infrastructure side, who also understand deployment of application, or you're just a DevOps, en I have a DevOps engineer as a friend who just read logs. So it actually varies. However, for you to start, stand out, you need to understand all of these environments. I read logs, I aggregate logs into ELK stack, like Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, in order for us to be able to visualize our log. We can also use Grafana to visualize log. That's, that's, that's the SRE side of, um, of DevOps. So you can see DevOps SRE. So that's the SRE side, which is Site Reliability Engine. Now we also have the DevOps, the guy that stands um, and communicates with the developer and try to do the operations, which is which is known as the DevOps guy. So there are a lot of things you do. You can be a guy who, who read logs. You can be a guy who, who deploys application, who deploys infrastructure. In my environment, we don't deploy infrastructure. Yes, I just deployed an infrastructure. We don't deploy an infrastructure in our environment. We have the Dell guys that are into um, Dell. Yes, the Dell guys are into deployment of infrastructure. Why would we, we manage our APIs? We read logs. We try to ensure that, especially um, for me, I try to ensure that my applica our applications are up and in a running state at all times. So if there's any form of issue, I work with, um, with other team to bring up the service. So what I'm simply saying is DevOps, different it differs in different organizations all you need to do is just know the job role of what they want if you can just do a quick study 
try to study it and just be this great guy who will be able to take up this job role. Um, I will still advise us to try to be fast, um, versatile. I'm currently doing a training for some guys. So what I'm teaching is I'm just trying to explain the DevOps workflow, trying to help them understand how cloud and DevOps works hand in hand. So all you need to do is understand what Terraform does, understand what CICD does, learn one CICD or two CICD tools, understand Kubernetes, understand Docker. Anywhere you find yourself, you'll see the organization might likely say, okay, we want a DevOps engineer. So when you get in there, they'll tell you that, okay, yes, this is our DevOps flow. However, we need you to just stand in as a guy who's going to be helping us with our infrastructure. That simply means you then you then start utilizing the DevOps practices. That simply means if the organization wants to deploy an infrastructure in high velocity in order for applications not to have bottlenecks when users try to access them, all you need to do is just bring start implementing what you've learned as a practice and start deploying your infrastructure. If they want to ensure that customers don't have downtime when they try to access the application, understand how the application works. Is the application a monolithic application or is it a containerized application, which is microservices? Just try to put things together. Understand this frame. Once you, you can understand the frame or the workflow, you should be able to um, assist the organization as a DevOps engineer. So DevOps is not about the skill alone. It's not it's not even about you understanding the skill. It's about you understanding what you're supposed to do in order for you to ensure there is uptime in services. Okay, thank you. Uh, two people are uh, lined up. Well, the first person is um, I. Am. So I've given I've given you speaker right. Please, you can unmute and ask your question. That's to I. Am. Hi. Um, I think that's very long ago. It's a bit not too clear, but I think yes. Uh, what do you think, uh, Abimbola? Can you hear him? Yeah, it's okay. No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. This is fine. Okay, so you can go on. So, um, my name is Ayo. I run a multi cloud environment Aya, if you're saying anything, I'm, un I'm unable to hear you. I'm sure you're coming here with Evo Pro. Oh, you can't hear me. Ayo, sorry, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Apple. Sorry, sir, I'm unable to hear you. Mm, I think you're, uh -huh. you know, it's breaking. We'll hear you for like a few seconds, then we'll not hear you again. Next question, I'll, I'll come back later. Then the next question, go. Okay, and if you want to, Pipe it too, you can. You know, I know it might not be as is convenient as when you say it, but at least that way we have more ways of getting your question across. Okay, wow. so while maybe you try different options to get us to know, I will move to the other person who is on the line. So Nedum is asking, I'll read the question the way it is. Uh, he or she is saying, what should a beginner DevOps roadmap look like? Is programming knowledge required? And what languages are commonly used in DevOps? Okay, so thank you very much, Chinedu. It's a guy, I perceive. So um, okay. first, here's what we all need to understand should we want to go into the DevOps workspace. The first thing is you need to learn the skill. After understanding the practices, you need to learn the skill. You need to learn the tools. And if I'm to advise anybody that want to go into the DevOps workspace, the first thing to do is to first understand the cloud environment. After understanding the cloud environments, please and please, you're not running away from Linux or Linux. You have to learn Linux operating system and how to run commands. Once you can learn Linux, it's going to be so easy for you to learn Docker. And just to take off this roadmap that I'm right, um, that I'm telling us, you can just write them down. Learn the cloud environment. If you don't want to base your cloud skill on Azure, you want to go into AWS or GCP, great, but you need a, a cloud um, skill. Because many times you don't run your um, DevOps workload 
in your on-premises environment. Yes, some companies do. My company we do, but you still need to leverage cloud. In fact, before any company that runs their workload in the on-premises environment will employ you, they will expect that you already have an idea on the cloud, right? So understand the cloud environment, understand um understand Docker, understand understand Linux before Docker, right? Understand Kubernetes. After that, you need to start learning CI CD2. And once you can do that, I believe you're good to go. So do that just what you need. So you can then learn um, monitoring too and all. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Ayo, do you want to try again? Yeah, yeah, I'm back. Okay. It should be better now. Yeah? Is, it, is it better? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. <laughs> So sorry about that. Yeah, so I was asking, um, um, so I have a multi-cloud environment. Um, so you know, some some assets are in Heroku, some are in Azure, some some are in um, AWS. But I'm trying to. So if you're familiar with Heroku, there's the Worker and there's the web, you know, um, instances that you can spin up. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to replicate the Worker, the way Heroku Worker works on Azure. But it has not been, you no, know, it's not quite clear how to go about that. I know you can set up web apps on Azure, but is there any, what's the equivalent of that in Azure where you can have, you know, an instance that takes care of background jobs, just like what the Roku work does? I don't know if you get what I mean. Yeah, I do understand you. Have you tried to look into um, Azure Function? No, no. Yeah, so so um, when it comes to cloud, there are standards, right? So any resource you see running on Azure, definitely there's a replica for that in AWS and also in every other in every other um, cloud provider you want to use. So all you need to do is just for you, you just have to sit back and know um, the particular um, resource and what that resource does. So check that resource out mm -hmm. on Azure. Check yeah, it out on so AWS. It sounds like would you have to tweak the application to fit that environment, or is it just you can move it and then it works out of the box? Um, in all fairness, I sincerely don't know the kind of application you're running, um, but yeah. there should be some tweaking. Or if not, if if it is um, just um, an application, I think no need to tweak. Provided you can run in this environment, you should just um, just do a lift and shift. It should work. It should work fine. Okay. Thanks, Azure Functions. I'll check it out. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, so I'm not saying it's Azure Function, but just try to look into Azure Function. There are a lot of services on that web app. Like, you can even look um, look up Azure Web App, too. Um, possibly, those can um, serve the purpose of what you want to do. Um, I'm okay. sorry. Just go ahead with your questions. Um, I don't know if there is a forum where I can just post this after um, 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 after um, deploying this application using my CI CD tool. Um, I don't know. Um, who am I going to reach out to once I'm done? I'm troubleshooting this. Okay, go ahead with your questions. I'm just trying to tell, tell you that. Um, oh, I'll okay, sorry. I thought I was. I thought I was not on mute. <laughs> uh, I I said yes. It would be me. I'm the one who emailed you about the reminder. So if you you can get my email directly from that uh, email. Yeah, great. So if you I'm guessing what you want to send us will now be like the publicly accessible link, right? Is that what you're, uh, what is it that? Is it something I can email? That's just what no, I want. No, I just know. want us to see what I'm doing. Like, you know, we've done everything, uh, but we had issues when we were trying to deploy the application using yeah, the CI Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so I'm just saying, possibly if there's a WhatsApp group, like I can just show everybody that, oh, okay, we went to oh, okay, to okay. It. Hey, it's not WhatsApp. Let me show you. Uh, <laughs> it's even a very good opportunity to show this because uh, it's a community. It's like, well, it's a community like WhatsApp, but it's also just that it's not WhatsApp. Right. So I'm going to grab this link. This is the specific event page for yours. So assuming, you know, you want to share something that you want people to ISO um, to in 
I should let you know the word, associate it with this particular event so that they will know that all oh, this thing we are sharing is related to the session we had today and all the participants that join will be able to know that, okay, yeah, this is the additional. So you see, I will share the link, but when you would go there, you'll be able to add them as comments, as, you know, add as many things as you want to add and it will show for everyone who has access to it. I'm also going to put the link in the chat because I know some people probably have joined and maybe they've not accessed that event page. So you, the community. And okay, makes sense, makes sense. So let's just bring our question. Page. Okay, so the other question that we have is, um, it's a standard question we ask all our guests and there are two. One is, uh, we would like to hear your journey, you know, how all of this started for you. Was it like that? Maybe you are one of those people that started from their mother's womb. They were That's not true. From. <laughs> okay. So what I think I would love to share your story. story. I think I would love to share, share my story. In fact, today I was just thinking about it. Thank you for bringing this up. So I'm a young guy, right? Um, I'm not a very smart guy. Like I'm not, an, like I was never an E student when I was in school. So a lecturer picked interest in me and he was like, um, I have a job. Ordinarily, this guy was doing his PhD, so he needed me to do some research work with him. So he said, hey guy, you'll be working on, um, um, what's it called, forensic investigation of cloud computing. Forensic, in forensic investigation of cloud computing. That was when I was in school then, some years back. So he told me that I'm going to work on this project. And ever since then, I just love the cloud environment. Now, I wasn't, a poor, like a bad student in school, but I wasn't an A student. So this lecturer liked me because sometimes we do presentation and he liked my presentation. So it was like, okay, you're going to work on this project. So that was how I started working on this project. And I, I really delivered. Thank God a friend of mine was there to also help me because I was not in school when he helped me to submit my project. So I did very well um, when I, when I um, came up with the research work. I also came up with a model on how to investigate this environment. So ever since then, I just love the cloud environment. I then started thinking of how am I going to create my environment, like my own cloud environment. So that was when I got introduced to VMware EXXI. So I'm not a coding person. I don't code. Yes, I work on script, but I don't do coding. I don't um, do coding. No. What I do is I work on script. I understand how technology works. I understand some networking layers, some software layers, and just understand how the IT, the IT space works. So I got in touch with someone who could assist me with virtualization, and then I started deploying virtual machines. And if you're talking about um, cloud environments, you're talking about a virtualized environment. That simply means there are a lot of underlying hardware layers and the hardware layers are then virtualized using a virtual hypervisor. A hypervisor, it's a tool that helps you to abstract the computing layer. So um, can I share my screen, please? Can I quickly share my screen? Yes, yes, I'll stop sharing, uh, yes. Um, on, I'm sorry if I'm taking your time, so no. just give me a minute. So, um, So I'll be joining the meeting by six. So the hypervisor layer, so when you get a server, I'm currently sharing my screen. So if you get a server, um, the infra, this is going to be the infra layer, right? So this infra layer contains the storage, right? Contains the um, server. And this server has CPU. Maybe the CPU layer is, um, maybe this particular server has CPU of 64 cores, has memory of maybe one, terabytes and GB of, um, maybe RAM of one terabyte, RAM and memory, they're the same. It also has a storage of maybe the storage of two TB, right? This is just one server. So one server has this particular compute, right? So if you want to now ensure that you're able to utilize every of these servers compute, like the CPU, the memory, instead of just deploying one application that will use just 2% of this whole compute, you can create a virtualization to you deploy an, a hypervisor. So what hypervisor does is hypervisor ensures that all these compute layers, the CPU layer is abstracted to this particular layer to help you to create lots and lots of servers. 
lot and lot of servers. So in that in this case, you have one server, but you can deploy a hypervisor on top of the server. After deploying the hypervisor on top of the server, the hypervisor will then allow you to create lots and lot of servers, which are known as virtual machine on AWS as instances. So when you deploy those server, the server will then run your application. Now, these particular VMs, they are going to give you the same performance as this underlining hardware, this underlining bare metal saver. So this technology known as hypervisor is able to help you to deploy a virtual machine that will give you the same performance as a bare metal server. Does that make any sense to you? So that's how I started. So I deployed my environment. I got a huge computer uh, with a heavy workload and I then deployed what we known as VMware EXXI. Have you heard of VMware? VMware EXXI. So I deployed it and I started creating virtual machine. You use vCenter to manage. Um, vCenter is just like the um, the console, the centralized console, um, con decentralized um, console in which you're able to manage all your virtual machines, just like the Azure portal here. So that's how I started. So I, I graduated from the university. I got a job. I was working as a young man. I think the money was fine, but I wasn't satisfied. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to quit this job and I'm going to... Okay, when I was serving, I attended Indian Institute of Hardware Technology. So I, I'm a networking guy. I love networking. So after that, I came to Lagos. I started working. Good money, but I wasn't... I was not picking down. So I decided to enroll in the training. After I did the training, I was asked to go work in a particular company. I left the company for another company. So I many times I tried to learn this technology myself. I learned Docker myself. I learned Linux myself. I learned Kubernetes myself. And I learned most of this technology myself. And you too, you can definitely learn them yourself. Hi to Michelle. Good to see you here. So um all you need to do is just to, all you need to do is, oh, my network is bad. All you need to do is just give yourself about this stuff and try to learn this technology. You can actually do it. I, like I say, I'm not a very smart guy. People are like, no, Bimbo, you're smart. And I told them, before I understand this technology, I have to read, 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 and read. So. I think you're far better than me. So when I tell people you're far better than me, that spurs them up and want, um, it makes them to say, oh, if Bimbo can do this, I can do this. So I do tell people that, hey, I'm not a very smart guy. I'm not a very intelligent person. So um, I have to, I have to um, read, 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 and read before I can understand any technology of interest. So these technology are beautiful. They are open source technology. You can learn them. So I'm trying to, okay, so I've deployed, so I, I'm trying to break this down. So I first deployed the application. So let's see. I deployed the application to, um, what's it called? You can go ahead with your questions to my ACR, which is like a bucket that helps okay. me to house my application. The, it's just one more question left. <laughs> and I know you okay. say you have a, another meeting to hop off to, so. Yeah. Yeah. The last question is, yes, what's so your advice is for anyone, you know, completely new to this, but also, you know, in X number of months wants to become an expert like you, you know, so you can tell us how, what advice you have for someone wanting to do the same career path. Thank you very much, sir. I love the person that asked that question. Brother, give yourself one year. Give yourself one year. Tell yourself that every three months you're going to learn this technology. Like every three months you learn new technology. It's possible, believe me, it's possible. When I was in my former place of work, I told myself, I got a new job. I mean, someone was like, okay, Bimbo, come and work with us. No, I said, I, I not even respond to him. I was like, I'm going to learn cloud to the maximum before I leave this place. And I stayed, I did not respond to this guy. So I learned cloud, I was promoted from, an ordinary engineer to a tier two engineer to a technical lead. So I was still there because, I mean, it's not about the money now. It's just you trying to gain and gain more knowledge. So when it got to that point where I said to myself that, okay, Bimbo, I think it's now for you to move on, I decided to leave. So what you tell yourself is, when I was there, 
I told myself every three months I'm going to learn new technology. So three months, January to March, I learned Docker. And I use different sources when I'm learning. That's why I tell people that I'm not that smart. So I don't read just one book. I read a lot of books. I read different resources. What is Docker? I'll go to docker.io to read Docker. I'll still go to some um, other sites to read Docker or Docker. So um, give yourself three months. Give yourself one year. One year, you're not going to change your job. One year, you're going to be where you are, but you're going to groom yourself internally. Like you're going to groom yourself in your cerebral um, capacity. Um, like mentally you, you you groom yourself so you're not going to groom yourself by moving from one job to the other you're going to stay where you are and groom yourself when you start moving from one place to the other you may likely lose focus but tell yourself that i don't know if that's if this advice is going to work for you but for me i tell myself i'm not going to apply for any job i'm going to stay where i am and that's what i did i stayed there for one year i groomed myself before i started applying and there are a lot of testimony that I would like to share with us, but I think time will not permit us. So just give yourself that one year period. Learn different technology within three months. Now you need to be so dedicated. Um, just, I think you can, believe me, you can. So that's all for my hand. Thank you. A lot of people are commenting. <laughs> Yeah, so if I say one year is a lot to one like, year is not a lot. <laughs> it's not. It's not a lot, believe me. It's not. I don't talk to God, I don't continue my stuff. Oh, uh, I think that's going to the end of my session. In six minutes or nine minutes, I'll be joining the call. So let's just see. Um, I don't know why this is not. You need to work, please. One thing about running your application using CICD2, ah, you have to sit back and check code. <laughs> you have to check code, check code, and you check the indentation because this is a YAML format. You have to check, 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 check. Okay. Let's see. This will work. If this doesn't work, bye-bye to when we meet or you can chat me up if you want me to have to check <laughs> so i really appreciate um the time spent here thank you for the, for the question so i'm I so grateful you. too <laughs> and i no, hope no, maybe one one day we'll have you again no it's not finished i think i'll i would like to be here awesome. i'd like to be here Great. so let's see if this is going to work it should I don't know why it's not working. Possibly, I I remember before coming to this session, I was trying I was trying to do some stuff with my pipeline, and maybe I broke some stuff there. Perfect. <laughs> so let's see. Okay. Uh, finally, I can see it's like yeah, it's green everywhere. Uh, green. Yeah. <laughs> so. Let's see workload. Oh, oh, what's wrong? What is wrong? It's still have been no, this is long. Push deploy. Okay, sorry. Wait. That's just one part. Ah, I really appreciate everyone for joining. It should work. I don't. It should work. 
deployed to the cluster, deploy to the cluster, deploy to the cluster, deploy to the cluster. If this doesn't work, I think I'm coming back next time. Maybe it could be one month. Maybe, you know, I believe you guys must have lined up some guys to come take you guys on some topics. If this doesn't work, I have to come back <laughs> because I'm oh, upset. I'm and definitely going back. There's a slot already. Oh, just, I'll tell you. I think I just, I don't want to start troubleshooting on call, so. It's my, it's my image, it's having issue. This is just, okay guys, thank you very much for having me. Okay. I have to go. Thank um, you. Yeah, I know, I have to you back. have another I have to meeting. Yeah, we'll yeah. email you, we'll talk, uh, we'll choose another date. Okay, Let thank you to everyone. Time. Thank you very uh, much, Tumishe. Thank you, Nedum. Bye-bye, Dumeji. I appreciate you guys. Okay, bye to everyone, and uh, the recording will be there tomorrow uh, on YouTube. We'll share the link also in the group. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. I'm ending this session now.